Hi, are you struggling with teaching even though you're a pro at some creative skill? Well, in this lesson, we're learning all about teaching techniques like speaking slowly. So that way you can have your students understand, learn faster, learn more advanced topics, and your online courses will be more successful. Hi, I'm Angel from RT Course Experts, and we help creative online course teachers with their tech. In this lesson, we're learning all about speaking slowly when you teach. Why is speaking slowly important? Why use it? A how-to guide? Then we'll go over an example, and finally, we'll summarize all our top tips. First of all, what are we talking about? We're talking about speaking slowly as you teach. It's a basic teaching technique to slow down in order to accelerate the speed of student learning. Now, why would you use it? Well, it gives students time to understand new information and build up to harder topics instead of just flooding them with lots of information, which a lot of online course teachers want to do. They have all this information. They want to just dump it and show that they have enormous value. And while there's a lot in there, you, you're, you're drowning your new students. So we need to chunk it up. We need to then piece by piece, go nice and slowly and deliver that slowly for students to digest. And then you can build upon that for the next thing and the next thing until your students become masters at the skills that you teach. Let's go over a how-to guide from two points of view. The first point of view is from the teacher's point of view. This is all about your delivery and your technique. The second point of view is the student's point of view and all the benefits that they're gonna receive when you as a teacher adjust your delivery. First, from the teacher's point of view, you should start by saying words slowly. Be aware of what you're saying. Yes, you're gonna probably be very excited about your content, but as you're actually teaching specific techniques, you got to remember to slow down and don't just fly through all your content. You need to slow. Your students need to hear those individual words. That first time, they're not going to be familiar with those concepts. So you need to slow down. Next, you need to choose simpler words, especially for students. So if you can say something simpler, go ahead and do it. And then later on, you can also use supporting words, or if you're in introducing a more complex word, explain it and then break it down from different angles using synonyms or visuals or examples with your hands. But the point is that you're being aware of the word choices that you're making. Next, you'll want to avoid acronyms and jargon. Right. So if there's industry phrases or there's three letter acronyms or uh, other words that people don't understand unless they've been in your industry. So go ahead and break those down, simplify, you explain them. You can also teach them these acronyms, but don't assume that they know it at their different levels. And of course, it depends on what you're teaching, whether you're teaching a beginner course, intermediate or advanced course. You should also watch cultural memes. So there might be phrases like hitting home runs, right? And if you know what baseball means, that's awesome, right? But if you're not a baseball fan and you're using, hey, hitting home runs every single week, then that may not be obvious to the rest of your audience. So you need to watch your memes because of a generation or maybe because of a culture, your ethnicity, your the country you're from, whatever that is, or even an internet meme, right? So not everybody is up on the latest shows and whatnot. So watch your cultural memes if you use them because it makes sense for your audience, cool. If not, go ahead and break that down and then you can throw them in for fun, but at least you're breaking the map down and speaking in clear words for everybody else. Very next is to chunk. It's very important for teachers to chunk content into pieces. 
don't just open up a slide and run, 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 and have one long run on sentence or fly through an example with your hands as you're teaching your various things. You need to chunk it up into three, five steps, whatever it is. You need to chunk it and then hit each piece step by step and also do that in phases. The first time you're gonna introduce your chunks and then you might go through those same chunks again with more detail, but you wanna break them up into blocks, right? Learning blocks. As a teacher, especially teachers that teach online or coaching or webinars, we just wanna go ahead and present, present, present. Now, I know that your students may not be in the room with you or they might be in a Zoom and they're just quiet, but you need to take pauses. So you're gonna deliver some piece of content, you're gonna pause. You may or may not be receiving feedback through comments on a Zoom or through real students, but just take that pause. Let the students digest what you just said, okay? And also just, it helps with your voice, right? So that you're not just this constant delivery. You take pauses, so take pauses in between your different lesson parts, your different bullets, your different chunks. Finally, repeating words and steps is critical in teaching. So not only will you speak at different speeds, right? Or the, maybe the first time you deliver it, you go super slow. The second time you go a little faster or you use different words. And then also, you know, you're gonna teach them then maybe you'll do it with them. And then finally, at the end of your module, you will review what you just taught them. So repeating is essential in teaching. And part of that repeating includes at least one or two times when you're explaining really slowly. Now let's switch over to the student's point of view. When, from the student's point of view, when they hear the teacher speaking slowly, it helps them understand the actual words. They might not even grasp the words. They might just hear something and not really understand that you're saying two or three words there. It's some fast phrase that's combined. They've never heard it before. So by breaking it down into word by word or slowly, or as well as just maybe supplementing with subtitles or showing them something with your hands on camera, using a second camera or inserting a still image or a PDF with a resource, so your pauses give students time to digest. So you've said a bunch of stuff, they're processing it, they might be taking notes, they might be following along, but by you taking pauses, that helps them not drown in new information. All of this allows them to build up to bigger chunks. So as they're learning slowly, piece by piece, then they can combine those, they can not only just be familiar with topics, but they really start to understand as they're building up and they're using those initial words or lessons to build up to bigger, more advanced skills. And all of this is gonna help them bridge to a prior new state. Remember, that's the reason they're taking this online course or your seminar or whatever it is. They're trying to get from an old state where they didn't have a skill or they don't know how to do a certain thing and they get to this new state where they're transformed. So from a student's point of view, they're being transformed to this new skill, this new state, this new ability, and that's important. So you should also remember with the internet, English may not be a student's first language. So by you speaking fast, combining concepts, intermixing, not chunking, that's gonna really affect, that's gonna really slow down students that where English is not their first language. Now there are different ways to learn. Learning with your, by reading, watching, hearing, uh, using your hands. Some of your students may not be oral learners. They're not learning by hearing, they, they need to be supplemented. Some of your students may not learn best by listening. It's not their strength. We're going to try to supplement that learning with pictures and videos and hands and demonstration. But in addition to that, we can at least try to speak slowly, clearly, and with pauses, 
and in chunks to really allow that audio delivery of your voice and your tone and your excitement to flow through the camera. Finally, from a student's point of view, it's easier to take notes or to copy you with their hands or their instruments or their tools. So as you speak slowly and as you're taking pauses and chunking, it's just easier for students to process that, to take that in and to take in between steps as they're copying you and they're trying to follow along. Now let's go over some examples of how an online teacher teaching beauty could use some of these techniques to improve the delivery of her online course. The first technique is speaking slowly. So let's go ahead and use some fake content and just rush through it and see what it sounds like. All right, <laughs> bear with me, I'm not a beauty expert. So. We want skin that has a smooth, not dry, not oily look. Wow, there's a lot there. And in addition to that, there are a bunch of knots that are confusing. And unless you really know what you're doing, you're not gonna know which parts were the knots and which parts were the do's. So this is a perfect example of speaking slowly. We want skin that has a smooth, not dry, and not oily look, okay? Big difference. So, and then later on, you can go ahead and do all those other techniques, right? To repeat, to have an online screen with check marks, do this, do this, X marks, don't do this, don't do this, right? So you're gonna supplement with visuals, but definitely slowing down the delivery will help. Another example, using simpler words. Next, create a silhouette around your lips. So if English is your first language, you got some school in your system, you got some life experience, yeah, you're gonna know what silhouette means. But if not, they might be lost. So go ahead, you can still say silhouette and then take a pause and explain what that is. Or the first time around, explain that now what we wanna do is create an outline around your lips. This silhouette technique, right? Just go ahead and now you're hitting it from different angles with simpler words as well as the more specific words. Because I get it, sometimes those synonyms, they're slight variants, but they have other connotations. So go ahead and use the main word or supplement with a secondary word, and that's gonna help you get your message across. Now, let's watch for acronyms. Hey, that brand was DC recently, right? DC, right? Just like that. So if you're in that right crowd, if you know what that acronym, you've got that industry jargon, cool. But if not, you might not know what DC is. And so you could just say, hey, that brand was discontinued recently. So you don't want to go ahead and use a DC brand. So you've explained it, and then you just kind of break it down with an example. And that's much better than just using DC and never, and losing half your students. Another thing teachers need to do is watch for the use of memes. So let's check out this example. It was like putting lipstick on a pig every single week. Right? So, okay, well, yeah, beauty, lipstick, lipstick on a pig, wait, what? Right? So, depends on where you are, you know, from what country or even what part of our country, right? Uh, uh, Southern Texas versus New York, LA. So, you may not be familiar with that meme. And so, you're going to lose pe people. And then, on top of that, what are you trying to say, right? So, you're just trying to wrap up something or make something slightly prettier, even though you're not really fixing the problem. It's still ugly underneath, right? Next, let's go over an example. First of all, in one example, you might be teaching his hair has to be cut, A, B, C, D, you know. In this example, his hair has to be cut, details, details, details colored and then it has to be colored this way details 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 and styled details 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 that's just a lot right like it's almost like if this were writing it'd be like a massive run-on sentence so as an online teacher we just want to break that up so first of all we can enjoy three sections the three topics his hair has to be cut colored and styled so let's go into each of these so now we need to take those three things. We can introduce them, that's cool, go light. Just give them like category names. Hey, we're gonna do cut, color, style. So now let's get into, now you're gonna introduce cutting and you're gonna go 
give it its proper moments. You're going to explain what it is that needs to be cut. Then you're going to use transitional words. Then, or number two, we want to color it. And then you can explain all the details of coloring. Coloring how, what stage, how, how long, what process, which parts. Finally, let's style it. And then you can explain that. So that's way better than just kind of throwing it all out there into one big blob of content that you're expecting your students to understand. And on top of that, not only is chunking good, but it's sort of a little bit of pausing and repeating all at once. Now let's look at pausing. So as an example, it needed to look clean like those 80s movies. Wait, what? If you're trying to say, let's focus, by pausing, it allows you to focus on a word, almost like a mic drop moment, right? It needed to look clean. Like in those 80s movies where those actors so-and-so, right? So just, you're, you're taking the pause at the right time, but you're trying to make a point, and then you can supplement. But if you put it all together, you might just lose some of your students. And finally, repeating. So. Repeating doesn't just have to be the same word again, again, again. You can hit it from different angles. As an example, flat eyeshadow is sometimes called matte eyeshadow. You, now you could then repeat. So literally, just, just repeat, like, like with a, maybe a different angle or a subset. So you could repeat the exact thing you said or repeat it with a slightly different variation. So flat eyeshadow is like matte eyeshadow, flat and matte, just like painting. They're very similar. And then you can keep going. So there, you can say a sentence in your, in your true kind of industry form. And then you could go ahead and take like a little time out, repeat it again, almost like if you had a pop-up on screen, but you're verbally giving them that pop-up, that little yellow post-it note. So these are some of the techniques that you can use to teach more effectively. If you want to level up, speaking slowly will create happier students. And if your students are happier, you're going to get more positive reviews. So let's summarize. Here are the top things you need to know. You want to slow down to actually teach your students more. Literally, remind yourself to slow down, use simpler words, avoid jargon, watch your memes, chunk up your content into little blocks, take pauses, not only for your students to digest, but so that they can catch up. Also, so that your delivery is strong and your delivery is in chunks. Finally, repeat using different variations. Now you're a lot smarter on teaching online so that your students are going to be happier, they're going to learn more, and you're going to sell more online courses. To learn more, check out the info and links in the notes. If you're loving this stuff, subscribe to keep leveling up your creative business. And if you need any tech help with your courses, community, or teacher website, visit www.artcourseexperts.com. Thanks for hanging out. Let's stay in touch.